Welcome to the 2021 Geico ESPN High School Football Kickoff, presented by the United States Marine Corps. From just outside of Houston, it's Texas High School Football, the Bridgeland Bears and the Klein Kane Hurricanes from Klein Memorial Stadium. So glad to have you with us tonight, my cousins, Rocky Boyman. These teams are excited to get back on the field for the start of this season. It feels a little bit more normal this year than it did a year ago. Yeah, hopefully it stays that way, but certainly so great to have high school football back in a more normal year. But, Mike, they say things are bigger in Texas. Certainly that applies to high school football, and we've got two great teams kicking it off here tonight in Texas. And you can't get bigger than number one at your position in the ESPN 300. That's where Connor Wigman sits, the quarterback. Yeah, he has every attribute a college coach wants, especially Jimbo Fisher, because he's going to Texas A&M. Can extend the plays, Mike, and one of the better throwers while on the run that I've ever seen out of a high school kid. But look, he'll just extend, he'll move around, let those wide receivers get open, and then the accuracy. The ball is always right where the wide receiver wants it. On the other side with Klein Kane, we'll see a star at wide receiver, Matthew Golden. Matthew Golden is going to TCU next year in a speed demon. That guy can flat run. He's a 10, 900 meter guy, and you see him. He just leaves defenders in the dust and then can, great job catching the ball. You see the speed down the sideline. He's also a 21-foot long jumper as well. He had a big game in this contest last year, and he's got to have another one if the Hurricanes want to have a chance. Ready to kick it away. Rowdy crowds on both the home and away sides here at Klein Memorial Stadium. A start at the 15-yard line, a return out to the 30. So Connor Wigman last year threw for almost 4,000 yards, 42 touchdowns. Accuracy, the quick release, all the things we talked about pose for a big year. And unsurprisingly, he throws on first down and picks up a first down to Andrew Molesky, his top target, a gain of 16 to start. They empty things out in the backfield for Wigman. No surprise to see them get to the line in a hurry. Jonathan Nelson makes the catch across the middle, and they are quickly moving into Klein Kane territory down to the 42. The pace of this offense, game number one, is a great test of conditioning. There goes Wigman up the middle. He's to the 10, cuts it back at the five and to the outside. He is in. Touchdown from 35 yards out for Connor Wigman. His passing acumen, you're so worried about it. You're covering everybody up. And then all of a sudden, bang, he just pulls the ball down and runs it. And you see the speed, a great athlete. Live arm, loved watching him in warm -ups. That ball just jumps out of his hand. And they're another team, Mike, that's gonna go fast. They like to go up-tempo with that offense. We're starting the game with a little wildcat here, looks like. Why not make it interesting to open up the night? And it's a first down <laughs> I love it. I love it. on a direct snap to Matthew Golden. A crucial early third down, trailing after giving up a touchdown. And Roper is taken down in the backfield. Huge impact in this game last year. Caught five passes, almost 200 yards. Mm. Out to about the 24 on the return. The quarterback verbally committed to Texas A&M, hopes to play football and baseball there in College Station. But the always talk about, give me the ball in a place where I can catch it and make a play. Make life easier for yes. me. And he does exactly that as he throws past the sticks. Next level if you're a passer, put the ball in a place where the defender can't get it and also a place where the wide receiver can make a play afterward. Look at this. Wigman throws it back for Nelson who heaves it downfield and it's caught. Ross Pohlmeyer brings it in. Trickery from Bridgeland and a gain of 30 to their advantage. Three and seven in their first year and a combined 20 and four in the ensuing seasons. Good throw, but an even better hit as Jeffrey Brown comes in to lay the lumber. So far in the first quarter, a couple of big plays, 30 and 35 yards for Bridgeland. The swing pass, nobody's there in the initial coverage or in the secondary coverage as well. Another big gain, and it's Jonathan Nelson. Flag at the end of the play as they get inside the 10 on a pickup, 23 yards. 
is with Jordan Wooden in the backfield. And they do indeed run him. He throws, and it's caught for a touchdown. The tight end, Reed McKeska, makes it a two-score game. Yeah, calm, cool, collected. Connor Wigman just takes a snap. They have a levels route, deep guy in the back of the end zone, and then the tight end, nice size target there. It's been a difficult decision. Strategic and conscious effort to ensure that I'm prepared, prepared to perform at an elite level at the collegiate ranks in the 2022 season. Goes on to thank his coaches and teammates from Klein Kane as well. And so it's a, a sign of the times, I suppose, that we're in where there's more opportunity, certainly, at the college level, playing time-wise, financially, that door has been opened this year. And the understanding of, if you think you're a player who can get to not just the next level, but beyond that to the NFL, that the value and age of a running back is certainly correlated more closely than it is at other positions. How quickly does it come back? On the run, it's Roper, who's got a little bit of extra life as he dances across midfield. Didn't go out of bounds and gets even further into Bridgeland territory. A play that looked like it might have had nothing to it is kept alive by Roper for 23. What did James Clancy, the head coach, tell us? Roper's a tremendous competitor. Look at him, refuses to go down, refuses to go out of bounds. Tight ropes down the sideline. He's got the Hurricanes looking for their first score. Across the middle, it's a dart, and it's a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Jalen Smith takes it all the way, a 31-yard connection to put Klein Kane on the board. Seven, Connor Wigman has that. He fakes the give, faces pressure, and is taken down back at the 20-yard line. Connor Bean, the senior linebacker over 100 tackles last year, makes it a quick play. Connor Bean's a special player on defense. He comes quick, and he gets there before the running back wouldn't can even. Kane, an opportunity to get off the field quickly if they can get a stop here. Cross the middle, a beautiful throw, almost all the way to midfield. Wigman to Molesky gets 27, eight more than they needed for the first down. Uh, you know, you're still getting into game shape. These long drives can really take a toll on a defense. Wigman looks back, throws deep down the sideline, it's caught. Jonathan Nelson, see ya for six. You see Nelson, he just goes off, carries out his fake, and then the wheel route up the sideline, and the defense just flat doesn't seem. That's so hard to have your eyes in the post. Couple of short kicks. Matthew Golden, the TCU bound wide receiver, is one of the two players back deep. That's right. And they're kicking it away from him. Yeah. Why, why kick it to him? Kick away from him and see what someone else can do. But right now, I think Kane's got to get Matthew Golden the football here. Roper on the move, pressure coming, and he's brought down from behind on third down, and it'll be fourth down as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. And get the coaching, someone who's going to develop you, make take your potential and get the absolute most out of it. Wigman making defenders look foolish. Here it was more than 75%, including nine of the 12 five-star players. A back foot throw for Wigman, that's a dime. Down to the five-yard line. Rocky, you know what? We took a lot of 2020 off. I've been saving them up. <laughs> Andrew Molesky again, touchdown at Bridgeland. This is just right in the perfect spot. Right there, high. Right where you can catch it. Put him in the slot, put him outside, give him a jet sweep, something, get the ball in his, in his hands. Roper throws a gain of about a dozen, hits Jalen Smith. He coached in the district at another high school and said, now I'm coaching the younger brothers of guys who their older brothers, I coached them maybe five, six, seven, eight years ago. And so it's all coming full circle for him as well. And a 20 point advantage over Klein Kane. Wigman, another throw on the money. Big hit. As Jonathan Nelson came across the middle. And there's an injured Hurricanes defender at the tail end of the play. Coming at him too fast whatsoever. Wigman back to throw. Great protection from the line. A couple of hits for Andrew Molesky. Molesky in the slot toward the bottom. Second from the bottom. Wigman looks that way, fires across the middle, pass is caught. First down, Molesky. He's been in the right place, the right time, every moment tonight. 
Good space to run, and Wigman is across the goal line for another Bridgeland touchdown. Call Craig Halbert right now. I agree <laughs> with you. Get him on the dual three. Look at this. A little zone read. But then, Mike, look, watch, watch the cornerback. Cornerback's one of your fastest players, right? Wigman just outruns him to the pylon. <laughs> to step in as a junior, granted, you've come up through the youth football system in, in the South Lake School District, but still, that is quite a tall task to step in for as talented a player as Quinn Ewers. This is the big play. 21 foot long jump guy. They look go. his way as he tucks himself in between the defenders and takes a tumble at the 34 yard line. First down, gain of nine. He brings Golden in motion. The future TCU Horn Frog has a first down as he scrambles inside the 20 and gets run out of bounds. Roper with time across the middle. It's the Midas touch. Matthew Golden, a 17 yard touchdown. Move Matthew Golden around. He's a slot to the right side. Just bends that route right there and perfect window for the quarterback. Puts it on the money. $171. Right. However, that doesn't really tell the full story. Wigman lets it fly down the sideline. And at the 45. Wow! Ross Polmeyer's first catch of the night is a big one for 33 yards. Influenced by the ground, probably a no catch, right? I would think so, but you know, as as we get into college, though, it's always about indisputable video evidence. It's got, well, they're going to snap it. Oh my God! Wigman, like a bowling ball down the alley, knocking pins over defenders left in his wake. Out of the 20-yard line, who don't even know is ever going to happen it is a remarkable story of perseverance for Mackenzie Milton. On the run, a throw to the end zone. He does it all, folks. Connor Wigman finds Andrew Molesky from 14 yards out, and they tack on six more before the end of the first half. Just a couple of third-down conversions. And Roper throws off the back foot. This time it's trouble, and it's picked off. Terrence Cullivan, the interception, and it's 41 seconds and possession for Bridgeland. Couple steps into Klein Kane territory. It's a throwback for Wigman, and now he takes off down the field. He's got blockers in front, just one man to beat. A one-play touchdown for Bridgeland. Connor Wigman stealing the show tonight. He may have had almost half the defenders around him, and then half of the Bridgeland team was ready to block for Wigman. It was a good job, but look, he just kind of hides behind his, his offensive linemen that were out there, and then he gets a crease, he just turns on the Jets. That's how quickly Bridgeland's scoring. Go, 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 go. McCray goes for seven on that carry. That ends the first half. Perhaps we'll see more of him. Questions about Carson Roper, whether he returns in the second half. And what more can Connor Wigman do to impress tonight? He's got a scoring hat trick. He's ran for one. He's thrown for a couple. He's even had a receiving touchdown. Much more of Matthew Golden committed to TCU, the number 36 wide receiver in the country, 256 overall in the ESPN 300. We saw him get utilized house about three weeks ago. How about that, he's talking about all the things these kids have to deal with and relocating and looking, making another play out there. There's nothing I love more, Mike, than a cornerback who loves to come up and tackle. Season goes on, it's good to get some guys some work. Can't imagine we'll see Whitman run the ball too much. But he still finds his top target, Andrew Molesky. Foot race to the finish, and nobody's close. Holy cow, a 70-yard touchdown strike, and the scoring just continues. Obviously, Connor Wigman has had an amazing night tonight. Just another perfect pass, maybe just a little bit behind Molesky, but Molesky has upped his stock tremendously tonight. Sure. Certainly. Walking up the stairs from the track to the press box up here, 
Admittedly, we were both winded. Yeah. I don't like to say it, but it's true. It's it's early in the season, <laughs> even as a broadcaster, right? We got to get into into form about this. Well, the kickoff returns have been plentiful tonight. To off the line and getting downfield quickly. And there he goes again, but the pressure comes and the sack is made in the blink of an eye. Aiden Montgomery from the safety spot took Jalen Smith to the turf before he could get a ball off to Golden. And, and that's what happens with your backup quarterback, Mike. You're just not used to seeing all those looks. Here comes a corner blitz off the edge. He just flat doesn't see it. It's fair. It's fair that some of these kids get these deals, but is it is it overall a good thing? Remains to be seen. Big burst here with a flag as a run out to the 40 yard line for Jonathan Nelson. I was hoping that you would make that point about the explosive plays. And that's what you've got to have in today's football. You got to stop explosive plays on defense and you got to get them on offense. And that's something they've been a little bit lacking in. And right now they're you know, replacing four offensive linemen and they got uh, a wide receiving core that's very, very much unproven. So we'll see how things develop for the Irish. We've seen almost everything so far tonight here in Texas. That was the first punt from Bridgeland. There's some space to roam. And working on the perimeter, Ramir McRae gets the opening he's been looking for all night here late in the third quarter. Goes for 28 on the run. Without their defensive coordinator, Marcus Freeman, who's off to Notre Dame, who's a big time part of that whole Bearcat program. Mike Tress will replace him, but. He's shown his talent tonight 54 14, 12 minutes to play under the night sky in Texas. With Mac Jones and, you know, Waddle and all these guys, and they're going to replace a lot of those positions, and likely they'll do that, but maybe there's an opportunity. And I'll tell you what, they got a a really trap game coming right out of the gate against Louisiana. Knocked off Iowa State. That's right. Really Raging Cajun's got a real good. The suspense had been unbearable until this moment, but it's time for tonight's Geico player of the game. Connor Wood. Tough decision, but I think if you account for eight total touchdowns, you should get the award. Through the air with his legs. He had a receiving touchdown. He's been everything. We expected him to be in much, much more. I mean, one of the truly more impressive high school performance performances I've ever seen. Literally doing it all. Passes on the money. Give a lot of credit to Andrew Molesky, too, who was able to catch just about everything thrown his way. I mean, that certainly seems like a very good idea. I can guarantee he won't get booed at the draft the way he does. <laughs> 54-14, <laughs> the final score. Bridgeland winners over Klein Kane. Come back and put a bow on it right after this time.